Welcome back to Flashpoint. More students headed back to the classroom this year, but they have a big advantage since the last time you were probably a student. Artificial intelligence is taking over the classroom. Both teachers and students are using the technology, but say it could go too far. Joining us now is Xi'an Jiang. She is an education professor at NC State who studies technology in the classroom. Professor, thanks for coming on Flashpoint. We appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, so it strikes me that AI can really help teachers in a, in a variety of ways. It can help them grade assignments or tests. It can, it can help students with research. But of course, there's a lot of gray area when it comes to, to things like safety online or even plagiarism. So let's start with the good news here. At its best, what can AI do to help in the classroom? Yeah, there are many different ways that AI can help. For example, as this, uh, there are like a automatic assessment tools that can give teachers feedback in terms of uh, where students are, what kind of concepts might be struggling with, and uh, how they can tailor their instruction to meet the needs of students uh, from different backgrounds. So the good part is that we have a really good automated assessment tool for teachers to use. And also, because right now we have AI that uh, each teacher might have a, uh, their own individualized uh, uh, teacher assistant that designed by AI agent. So in this way that each teacher has some help in the classroom uh, with the agent as a support. Uh, those are all the promising side of using AI uh, in classrooms. And what about then you Just talk name about a few. Yeah, you talk, you, you talk about for the teachers, but then what about for the students? How, how can it be, again, uh, we'll get to the negative stuff in a second, but how can it be used as a positive for the students? Yeah, so for students, uh, they can have like, for example, in uh, coding, when they learn computer science, uh, they can use AI uh, agent as their uh, peer, like coding peer that can help them to address debugging, uh, uh, in the debugging uh, process to address like uh, the errors in their code. And there are many other ways that uh, uh, AI design as an agent to support teachers. So it's more like they have a peer uh, always with them and address their problems, not just as an instructor, but as a peer that who might share similar struggles and uh, help them in the process of problem solving. See, now all that stuff sounds really good and really positive, but, but, we, but we know that there, there is some negative as well. As a person who studies this for a living, as a person who's intimately aware of, of technology in the classroom, what is then um, the worst case scenario when it comes to AI in the classroom? What parents watching this, what they need to be worried about? Uh -huh. So there are many things we need to consider. Uh, one big thing is about AI bias and ethics. Uh, in terms, because AI, at, at least uh, currently, they're most built on training data that uh, have been uh, generated by someone from some perspective. And it is not transparent in terms of what kind of data they're trained on. And we're not sure that whether those models, uh, I mean, in particular machine learning models trained on historical data and what kind of prediction results might come out and how should we, whether we should trust those results and in what ways. So that's a big challenge in education. It's more about the bias, the ethics, and also uh, data privacy and many other things we need to consider when bringing AI into uh, classrooms. We, we know at this point, when we talk about uh, education in any way, and, and we talk about students going back to the classroom, that um, school districts are, are strapped right now for cash. Uh, we know that, that teachers are strapped and they're stressed. They have their hands full. From the work you do, from your research, does it appear that teachers are, are fully prepared to handle AI in the classroom? Um, I mean, based on my discussions with uh, teachers, uh, it's still ongoing debate and going discussions in terms of what guidelines should put there when bringing AI tools uh, into the classroom, especially uh, right now, the uh, kind of uh, tool that's very permanent is uh, uh, generative AI technologies. For example, the AI can generate uh, essays much better than the the, the students would write uh, in classrooms. And uh, what kind of regulations or guidelines we should have uh, in terms of bringing those uh, tools in the classroom still uh, ongoing conversation. And there are several uh, workshops uh, offered by NC State faculty members like Tiffany Barnes. Uh, she uh, had a um, summer workshop for teachers to think about how we can bring AI tools 
uh, into classrooms, for example, ChatGPT to generate uh, solid lesson plans and how that should work and uh, what kind of things we need, should consider when using that tool to uh, support the teaching practice. So there are many things happening, lots of discussions. Uh, in terms of saying preparedness to use a tool, I would say we are fully engaged in the discussions and we are very uh, excited about what would go next and how that would shape uh, the practices in classrooms. I, I've seen that some districts are considering banning chat GPT um, in the classroom. Do you, do you think that that is too reactionary? Do you think that goes too far? Uh, in terms of banning the tool, uh, the my at least that's my perspective is that instead of banning the tool, we should more think about how we can leverage the tool because it exists there. No matter whether we ban it or not, students know it, teachers know it, parents know it. They can use that in some way. We should make that transparent and make that a discussion. And I think that this discussion should involve teachers and parents in the community too, not just teachers, educators, researchers. So I, well, I hope that it's, it's kind of a, a discussion happening in different sectors. And then we bring our efforts together to think about how we can leverage this, this tool and what kind of things we need to consider when bring that into the classroom as a teaching tool or student learning tool. And, and finally, what, what is your message to the school districts out there? Say Charlotte Mecklenburg schools or Wake County schools, it comes to you asking for your advice. When it comes to AI, what is your message for those districts? So my message for, I will go back to what uh, in my st study area, I study student learning in AI education. I would stress the importance of opening the black box of AI and for teachers, for students, for parents, for the community to really see what's going on in the AI algorithms and how we can use it and how it produced the, the kind of result that we get and how we even see uh, the ads that we see in uh, YouTube videos. So I want to ask to have a transparent view of how AI is created in such a way that could serve a foundation for us to think about how we can bring that into classrooms and what we should consider when we use them in teaching learning practices. All right, Professor Jang, NC State. Professor, thanks for coming on, we appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me again and um, um, I really hope that this discussion can go on and on and have an open discussion for the whole society to think about where the future is. It's an area that needs everyone's input and effort. It's an important discussion that I think will continue for sure. All right, Professor, thanks. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. More Flashpoint after this.